What's going on guys? This is Specialist Leah Steadfast Courage. Today I'm going to go over the topic, should you doomsday prep or is it a good idea to doomsday prep? There's two questions you must ask yourself. We got multiple reasons why we would do that or we could just end up not doing anything and forget about it and hope that it never happens or just be one of these people who put your head in the sand thinking, these guys are crazy, you know? Doomsday prepping. What are you guys doing? Are you brainwashed? What's going on? Some people think preppers are loony. Preppers are insane. What exactly do you think you're I'm, doing? I'm asking for Very imaginative. That's what you're thinking. I know some of you think that if you don't doomsday prep. So why should you doomsday prep? Okay, we got multiple scenarios we could go over. We could go over nuclear biological attack, NBC, which is what the military used to call, I don't know what they call it now. Nuclear biological attack could be nuclear weapons, nukes going off. If you're in the city, in the city that got nuked, you're pretty much gone. All your troubles are gone, so you don't have to worry about nothing. If it's a biological attack, just a lot of stuff that can occur. We got we got VX gas, we got anthrax, we got just multiple multitudes, or just a new a virus. If you want to watch a movie about another virus, if you care to watch another movie about a virus, which you pretty much live through the coronas, and you don't really want to watch it because you already lived it. Contagion, that's one scenario that we could live through, you can prepare for. That's just one biological attack that can occur. Pretty much you lived it already. If you haven't, if you just your head was up your ass the whole time during the 2020, early 2020s, then you got you got to check yourself on that one, but look at what happened. Then use that as an example. What should you get? What do you need? Toilet paper is one, obviously. Water. If you li if you live in a place like the city, who knows? Maybe the water system might fail. Plenty of water, water. Plenty of extra water. Baby wipes to keep yourself clean. All types of stuff. There's so many things you would need in this scenario. Let's say. It's of a nuclear attack and you're out living out in the middle of nowhere or if you have time to get away. The question is, do you really want to survive a nuclear attack? That's the, that's the question right there. That is a real question to, to ask yourself. Would you want to survive a nuclear attack? What horrors you see afterwards? But in a nuclear attack, you're gonna need a lot of stuff. To be out in the country for one thing, to have Pro masks, they have the mop suit charcoal, you know, I don't know if you guys know what the, mop, the charcoal mop suits, I don't know the name of them, but the mop suits, mop level four mop suits is what you need. There's just so many different things that you gotta think of in these types of scenarios, but we're just gonna keep it basic on this one. Like an economic collapse. Again, look at what happened in the early 2020s. Toilet paper, baby wipes, hand sanitizer, band-aids, Obviously, you're gonna overlook band-aids. Band-aids is the most important thing over what happens when you're gonna get cut. Back in the old days, when someone got cut, you're looking at possible death. To summarize, when you have a wound, keep an eye out for the following symptoms of an infection. One, noticeable changes like growth of the wound. Two, redness or streaking. Three, swelling around the wound. Four, excessive pain. Five, warmth or tenderness around the wound. Six, discharge, pus, or odor. Seven, fever. If you do experience any of these symptoms, you should see your doctor immediately. It's one of those things where you get cut, you could die if it gets infected. Remember, you keep disinfected, all kinds of ointments, all kinds of medical stuff, antibiotics for sure, because a little cut, you're done for, for some of these people, especially nowadays. If you lived in a city, always a clean life, you get cut, you're done for, man. Possible death. Now we're looking at weapons, guns, ammo. Guns, lots of guns. Of course we're gonna need weapons and ammo. I think question was ask yourself, are you just gonna be, depending on the scenario, are you just gonna throw people away? Are you gonna see that people are still important? Possibly, 
things could go back to normal afterwards. So you don't want to be this insane individual who goes out and starts killing people and you might actually survive. Good example of that situation, watch Jericho. Jericho, a small town in Kansas that witnessed a series of nuclear attacks that destroyed 23 American cities in a single day. It's a two season show, it's really good. I really love that show, I wish they made more seasons. It's one of my favorite shows. It's so good, I love it. But anyways, in the show, after season one, everything goes to hell in the handbasket after season one, the nuclear attack takes out some of the major countries in the world. And this little town, Jericho, has to figure out how to make it through that situation. He can become a psychopath, he can start killing people, taking what they have, and what if the situation is you survive and things start getting back to normal and people want redemption on what you've done in the past and they come after you, make a big deal. They make, they make a big effort to come after you even though things are going back to normal. Or if you get tried and thrown in prison or executed because the situation was bad that you were in, but you made the situation worse by killing innocent people for no good God reason. Remember your neighbors are still important even though the economic collapse occurs. You're, you're gonna need people. Another thing, people. People are very important in this situation. I know guns are important, but you're gonna need people. You're gonna need friends, you're gonna need neighbors, you need everyone to be on your side for the common good of surviving. Let's be honest, I know people say, oh, I hate people. Well, you're gonna have to survive with the people. People are more important to you. It's not like you can just throw people under the bus. In a time of crisis, people are the most important thing around. You can't throw them under the bus. This is not like how it is nowadays where you can throw people under the bus. You're gonna be in an equal level playing field, all right? If the economic collapses or bad, the boogaloo occurs, you're gonna need people. You're gonna need friends, you're gonna need neighbors. I don't know about you, if you've been overseas and you had to deal with low personnel shortages, food shortages during the coronas, all this stuff occurs in a situation of this magnitude. So you got to band together with people to figure out how to survive, all right? This is no me, me situation. This is we, we situation. We all survive together, work together, for the common good of surviving. So pretty much that's what you're gonna have to do. And location, let's say you're out in the middle of nowhere, the boonies, and you have so much stuff. You've been prepping for like 20 years. You got food, ammo, water, chickens, gardens, all that good stuff. And people come banding together to take what you have. You're gonna need other people with you to defend it. So that's where the people come in hand. People are very important to work together. This is not, like I said, not a me, me, it's a we, we. All together, we work together. So to defend what you guys have, you gotta have people. Like I said, if you've been overseas, like Africa, for example, you gotta defend what you have. So what are you gonna have to do? Guns, right? What else are you gonna have to have? More people. More people that set up shifts, night shift, day shift, to pull security and you could use nods but you don't really need nods all you need is a red dot to pull security at night so two man teams battle buddy system 24 hours a day you got to have at least two guys on shift maybe more depending on how big your area operation is you're going to need a lot of people to defend that location and again if you're actually defending this location you don't want to start killing anyone who walks up on you what if they're lost what if they're confused what if the situation is that they're desperate they need some water don't start wasting people just because they come on your property you must learn some compassion what if you taking this person he could be on your side think man think help each other don't just be this individual where you're like i'm just gonna keep it to myself and not help anyone else no this is team building, all right? Your team building a team so you all defend each other and take care of one another. So that's one of the things you gotta learn. This is a very big situation where you, you must become a people person, no more hiding in your house, doing nothing. Because as soon as you start hiding, people start coming and taking what you got. So you gotta have a big presence in the location, but not too big to where everyone comes over to you and you have to defend it. That's not, no bueno, man, no bueno, no good. And last but not least, you don't wanna become a tyrant. 
You don't want to be this person knocking on doors, trying to take what everyone has. That's not a good idea. Don't be this person. Don't be this individual. If you want a good example of why you don't want to be this individual, watch Jericho. It's a very good show. Watch it through season two all the way to the end. You'll find out why. It's not good knocking down doors and being this complete scumbag trying to take everything that everyone has. It doesn't end very well and it ends extremely bad for you as the one knocking on the doors. And not everyone is gonna be unarmed in this situation. We live in America, man. With the more, more guns than people, all right? More guns than people. You're knocking down doors, doing this to people. You're gonna lose people. You're gonna lose good people on your side. Just for what? Because you didn't prepare right? Because you just are being a scumbag? You wanna take what everyone has? Also, good example is Katrina, example to go off of roving looters all kinds of stuff looting everything people got it in their own hands to start taking care of themselves taking justice in their own hands taking care of themselves that's not what you really want to deal with all right this is this is not the wild wild west remember stick together with others don't become a bandit don't become a scumbag Take care of one another. Things might get back to normal after a while because the US government is usually gonna come in. They got the power of making new currency, the power of God practically in their hands. So remember, I'm gonna go become a rap scallion. No, that's not it. Not a good excuse unless you're desperate. Again, if you're desperate, it's best to go find somebody who's prepared and work for them. All right, if you guys want to go into a specific subject about doomsday prepping, let me know. I got some knowledge about prepping and how it feels to be in a situation where there's no one out there that will help you. Nearest cop is like 100 miles away practically. You might as well be. You call the cops, no one's going to come for you. Trust me, I've been in that situation. That's one of the reasons why I got into guns in the first place. Because when the cops, sometimes they never come. They will come eventually to pick up your body, but not right away when you need them. It's just best to be prepared no matter what situation. Anyways, hope you guys liked this video. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe to Steadfast Courage. Let me know what you guys want to hear. If you guys want to hear more about this, or you want to hear more about another situation, do I want to make an NBC video, nuclear biological video? I got some knowledge in it. Well, I have to research most of it. But anyways, remember, peace through fire is priority. Especially uh, and for my Navajo people, I go on it.